Se você deseja consultoria de qualidade, vem para o time What is up guys? Welcome back to the education section. So today we're going to move on a little bit from the, the training segment. Obviously in a lot of the videos I'm going to kind of refer back to stuff because like I said in the, the video so far, I believe the training to be the be all and end all. But this next bit that we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on some anabolic discussion. And the topic for today is what should kind of be the most appropriate video I would say for this situ situation is when to take your first cycle and what to take. Now, this has been extensively covered, so I, I don't feel like, also by myself, I've put out a lot of content before on this, but I thought that it's always good to revisit things just in case my perspectives have changed. And actually, there has been a slight adjustment to my perspective, which I'm going to explain. Um, now, firstly, I'll say when I did my first cycle. So I first did anabolics when I was 18 years old. Um, I remember it all really, really clearly, to be honest, because um, I was playing for London Wasps at the time, I was under contract, and um, I just played for, I just played an England under 18 game as well, and I had no intention of going to university. As far as I was concerned, I was going to get re-signed to play my next season, where, because it was in my last year at, at school, and um, play my first season of full professional rugby. I was on a professional contract. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a professional contract from when I was 16, 17, 18. And then I assumed that I would then carry on doing that. Um, I, at that time, was in the WADA drug testing system, which means that I could be tested at any point. Now, anyone could turn up at any point and drug test you, and they did. Between the ages of 16 and 18, I was drug tested four times, I think five times, something like that. They were always after games, they were always after international games, um, but I was drug tested. Uh, I went into a contract meeting, which I presumed I was just going to be signing them to carry on, and I got released, um, which, was a bit, which was a bit of a surprise, a bit of a shock, and I was like, shit, okay. Um, so then I thought to myself, okay, what do I do now? I got... Uh, an academy contract offer from Tigers, but I didn't want an academy contract. I'd, um, I wanted a professional, a full professional men's contract. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna go to university and I'm just gonna figure some things out. But quite fortunately, I'd, I had good grades because I went to a very good school. So I went to Loughborough University to study sports science. Um, the moment that I decided I was gonna go to university, which happened quite quickly uh, after getting released, and knowing that I was out of the wildest drug testing system, I started anabolics there and then. Um, not knowing fully what was gonna happen with my path of what I would decide to do and not do, but simply knowing that I loved lifting weights, I loved bodybuilding at that point already, like I really did, like I was really, despite playing rugby at that level, I loved bodybuilding. And I, and I, I was heartbroken by not getting picked, so then, Sorry, uh, having my contract renewed. So then I thought to myself, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna get fucking massive. Um, and just, just, because I was already very, very, very big and strong for an 18 year old. Way bigger and stronger than any, anyone I knew at 18 years old, because I was absolutely obsessed with it. Um, so it was a really easy decision for me to hop on. But mine was more forced out of, fuck you for releasing me, I'm fucking pissed off, so now I'm just gonna get fucking huge. Mine was almost like a breakup situation where you get your heart broken and then it makes you do gym loads and just look awesome. That's literally, honestly, that's what I felt. So mine was like an emotional knee jerk reaction to something that kind of happened to me that was traumatic. It's, I, I, and genuinely, that was trauma. It still upsets me now. I'm still hard done by that situation. Still feel like I should have played a, a full lifetime of professional rugby. Um, it's what me and my dad were aiming for from the age of four years old. Um, so I think I rushed that decision. That's why I'm telling you this story. You're probably thinking, the fuck has this got to do with your first cycle? Because I want to give you some, um, I want to give you the bigger picture as to why I did what I did and then on reflection, maybe that was a mistake. That was a mistake. 
that genuinely was a mistake. It was just an emotional reaction. And we can all attest to the fact that when we are in high states of emotion, we, we most typically make the wrong decisions. It's impossible to make effective decisions in high states of emotion. Bodybuilders are the worst for it. Bodybuilders, when they are in like the dog end of competition prep, don't make decisions that affect your life. Just, just carry on online shopping. Let that be the extent of your decision making. Don't, don't make decisions on your coach, your sponsors, your partners. Trust me, it's the worst time to do it. So I made an emotional decision and, um, and I do think it was a mistake. Yes, I had been lifting weights extensively since the age of 12. Because when I was at 12, I was at Harlequin's Academy and my strength coach at the time was a guy called Keith Morgan, who was the head of GB weightlifting. I've spoken about him a lot before for those that have that kind of followed my content. So my very first introduction to a gym was at Crystal Palace Weightlifting Centre with the GB weightlifting coach. And he was my coach for three years, four years, four years until I was 16 when I got signed by Wasps. Um, so I, I really, really understood how to lift weights really a lot. So then when I went to WAFs, I, they then realized, okay, this lad's already really big into his weight. So then I got on amazingly well with my SSC coaches. And my SSC coach at the time was a guy called Hugh Jones, um, Welsh chappy, and I, we, we were really close. So 16, 17, 18 years old, again, adored SSC. So I had six years of really, 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 really understanding how to lift weights. Um, and figuring a lot of stuff out and, and I just adored it. So it's not like I was untrained, but we all know that what you do when you're 12, 13, 14 years old, it's not real in comparison like to, to when you're a little bit older. Um, so I wouldn't say that those years are the same kind of six years that you'd have if you did 18 to 24. I would say they kind of count for maybe like half the time um, so I feel like I would have been better off waiting from instead of starting at 18 to 21 and then having a true six years of training and nutrition kind of under my own observation and guidance because especially when you're young you're still living at home your mum's still cooking you meals like at this point I think it's a mistake to be jumping onto a cycle. I feel like you're so naive that you need to understand how to eat and train a little more. I feel like it's almost impossible to understand those things at that age. And then even myself, I was a very, very, very independent um, 16, 17, 18 year old. I really, really was. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's not enough. You don't have enough, I believe, life experience to be putting hormones in your body at that age. So I, I think that, that was a mistake that I made. So for those of you that are 18, maybe don't. I, I, I don't want to tell you what to do and what not to do. I, I, it's, it's a tough one. But I just want to share my experiences and then allow you to make the decision based on kind of what I'm saying. I, I would be really happy to see you wait until you were 21 and then you've had a really long time of training under your belt. You really get hard training and you're consistent with your eating and you have good relationships with food. And then based on that, when you do apply your first cycle, the progress you're going to make is going to be absolutely unbelievable. Whereas when you're young, if you're still eating poorly and your training is somewhat haphazard, Yes, you are going to make progress, but you're just using the anabolics to make progress. So when you go on cycle where you've got everything in order for like maybe two years, the step forward you'll make will be so much more advanced that that's then a good first cycle. Like I believe a good first cycle, you can put on 20 pounds of actual muscle. Okay, I, I believe that if you have done anything less than um, 20 pounds of actual solid muscle, you have made a mistake. Um, I know I did that in my first year. I think I did more, I think I maybe did 30 pounds. But I was obsessed. 
uh, re I really was obsessed. And then I was quite fortunate in the sense that when I went to Loughborough University, the, it was a very, very, very <coughs> intense university when it came to sport and lifting and then the kind of the, the notoriety that that had. So for me to go there and then be as obsessed with I, as I was, it was hugely like praised. So immediately in my first year there, I was like, hell yes, I just want to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and that's what I did. Uh, <clears throat> do I think I could have made even more progress by being patient and understanding things more? Potentially, yes. But more so my decision was just based on kind of emotional maturity. Because I don't want to say to someone that's 18, that's an okay age, because we all have different levels of emotional maturity. Like I know mine was extremely advanced because like when I was 12 years old, I went to a school that was in London and I had to commute every day from Brighton to London. And then I would then go from London, or from my school, to then either Harlequins or Wasps of an evening. So I really wasn't at home. I, 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 I was a very independent 12 year old from that age almost, that was traveling to school on their own in London and then going from their school to their training session of an evening and then heading home and getting up the next morning and going to school. It wasn't like this normal, like 12 year old environment that most people are used to. Um, so I, from the, by the time I was like 16, I was incredibly self-sufficient. And then like, so the moment I hit 18 years old and I left to go to university, I never returned home again. So I, 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 I know that I was very advanced in my emotional kind of situation at that age, way more than most 18 year olds are. But nonetheless, I still think, I, I, like I said, I made, I made a mistake. So hopefully this video gives you a bit of insight to my perspective on whether you rush that process or not. Um, no one can tell you when the right time is at all. Some other things that are kind of relevant at that time. If you are, this is my perspective, and a lot of people might disagree with me on this one, but this is generally my perspective on life. I'm starting to get a little bit more aggressive now because I can feel my pre-workout kicking in. So I'm a bit, once I feel like my pre-workout kicking in, I'm a bit more like, oh, come on. Um, if it's something that you want to do, I don't believe that you need to ask for permission to do that from anyone. So for example, when I wanted to do that, I told my dad at 18 that that was what I was going to do. And whether he liked it or not, that was what was happening. Because that's the sort of person that I am. If I had a mother, for example, that was around at the time, which I didn't, which was probably a good thing, um, and she disapproved, I know with the sort of person that I am, I wouldn't have cared at all. Her opinion would have been entirely void to me. Now that is both a, a good thing in some ways, but also a very bad thing. So this is just why I want to play devil's advocate with this situation, because these people do have your best interests at heart, but a lot of the time, parents don't understand. So the way that I approach this situation with my dad, who trusted me a lot, because he knew that I was a very mature 18 year old. I sat him down and I said, right dad, I was like, this is what I want to do. I said, and this is what's gonna happen. And I said, and this is the benefits that I'm gonna get from this situation. And these are the potential negatives. And this is how this all works. And I was like, this is the amount I'm gonna take. And I explained everything to my dad as much as I could to make sure that he was as well informed as possible. And then my dad was like, are you sure about this? Like, he's like, do you really understand what you're doing? Now the problem was, is at that age, is that I was incredibly well researched. I'd been reading for a very long time. I knew anabolics really very well as an 18 year old, but there's only so much, again, you can know as an 18 year old because of your emotional maturity. <clears throat> but with that being said, if it's something that means a lot to you, and you have real goals in these situations, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do those things. You have to find a way to, to make them understand. And if they don't understand, 
I'm sorry, but it's, it's tough luck on them. And I believe this is the same thing with life partners as well. If, if you're with a life partner that doesn't understand your choices, you're not with the right life partner, as, as hard as that, is, that, that comes across. And that's a really, really tough thing to say. But I know for a fact that if Corin decided to choose to do absolutely anything in life, I would 100% support her. As long as she was making smart decisions. Because you have to remember that a first cycle isn't a reckless decision, as long as you're being smart with your choices. If you're going straight in and you're taking Tremolone and Aurals and all of these things together, yeah, that's fucking stupid. But we're just talking 250 milligrams to 300 milligrams of total anabolics that largely are just gonna come from testosterone. It's not a stupid or reckless decision. And I don't believe anyone can tell you that you should or shouldn't do that. It's just my perspective. I absolutely understand some other people have their own perspectives on that, and that's fine. And I 100% don't, I, will, I promise you, I will not argue with you or tell you you're wrong. In that, 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 but this is my perspective. And I'm, you can take that from the perspective of someone that is incredibly driven and really, really, really focused on having an incredibly fulfilled life. Because I knew from when I was 18 years old that once I did get released from where I was at WASPs, that I thought to myself, whatever happens, I'm going to make sure that I am incredibly fucking successful. So for me, I saw using anabolics as a path to that, in the sense that I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this bodybuilding a go, and I'm gonna really, really try to become someone that is very, very, very big and very, very, very strong, and no one is gonna stand in my fucking way. And because I was at Loughborough, I thought to myself as well, I'm also gonna get very, very, very smart on the physiology of these things. And that's just what I did. And if that's the path that you want to take, do it. And if anyone tells you not to, tell them to fuck off. <laughs> that's, that's the phrase that I've been wanting to say the whole video. Like, so that's my perspective on that. Um, it'd be interesting to see, hear some other people's perspectives on kind of how they introduce their first cycle to their partners and their parents, because I know it's a touchy subject. But like I said, the key points to take away from this video, I think 18 is too young. I would like to see a bit more time even, even like an 18 year old now that could be even more advanced in their knowledge of things because of the ease of availability. Like if you've been like reading like mine or Dante or Scott or Dr. Scott or um, Joe Bennett's content since you were 15 and you're now 18, yeah, you, you probably really understand things. Because I know that at that age, you're just a sponge for information. But your mental maturity, your emotional maturity is still very, very low. So just be patient. Just think to yourself, I'm gonna challenge myself for another couple of years just to see what I can do with my body and then, and then potentially go from there. And then like I said, if anyone tells you, no, tell them to fuck off, but just make sure that you are very sure with your decision making. Just because someone tells you no, don't then see that as a situation to go, okay, oh, I've now definitely got to do it because I'm gonna be a rebellious little cunt. Like, that's not, that's not how things go. Um, Listen to what people are saying to you if they have valid reasons as to why that might not be the smart choice. Um, you need to essentially make a, a, a cost-benefit analysis of your whole situation. What are the costs? What are the benefits? What do I want to achieve from this situation? Do I understand everything as a whole? And then um, basically if you run your whole life with like a SWOT analysis, which is like a, a, a strength weaknesses overview, you're gonna make good decisions, but very hard to do. Not very many people make life-changing decisions in that manner, but if you can, it's gonna be a very, very good thing for you. So that's my advice. So we'll wrap this video up here, guys, and then we'll get into actually a second video where we talk into the specifics of the doses, because this one went on a little bit longer, and um, yeah, we kind of, I gave you a bigger picture than maybe I intended to, but hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Um, Leave a comment, let's get a discussion going on this one. I'm intrigued to hear how you guys told your significant others 
Um, let's share some stories. It'll be fun and helpful, I think. And tell us kind of what came from it so other people can then read in the comments. If you think I'm wrong, tell me why. I'd love to hear, genuinely. I'm not saying that. I, tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what I'm missing. Um, and then other people can benefit from that too. Uh, cool. Cheers, guys. Para mais vídeos assim, deixe o seu like e se inscreva no canal Vini Wizard, o bodybuilding traduzido de graça para você. Oh, wow.